the ranks of district as the 2012-2013 District 2 Governor. Tonight, Jackie Bailey, Distinguished Toastmaster, is coming clean with the fact that leadership is messy. Let's welcome Jackie Bailey. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Leadership is messy. Leadership is inconvenient. Leadership is interruptive. And it's often unforgiving. Leadership is messy. Let me tell you what I mean. You see all those coaches that lead their teams to success and victory, and then at the end of the game, they get drenched with icy, sticky Gatorade or some such other fluid. Leadership is messy. And then, God bless the men and women in our armed forces who lead in combat and who sacrifice education, careers, family, things that we have because of their sacrifices. Leadership in combat can be fatal, but at the very least, it's messy. And then those of you that are parents truly understand how messy leadership can be. I don't think there's any messier type of leadership than parenting. And there's no time off. There are no vacations from parenthood. It is something that you experience for the rest of your life once it has begun. Leadership is really messy. And some people should never be parents because they're really good at messing up their own lives. Leaders, yeah, I don't know if we can call them leaders. They think they are. Maybe because they're leading men and women. But whether or not they're actual leaders, they still can mess up things pretty well. This is my desk just a few hours ago. It's pretty messy. I'm finding that leadership has been messy for me. I'm involved in a lot of things. I wear a lot of hats. Most of you know that besides being the district governor two days now, I also have a consulting business. And I contract with a few other businesses and consult for them. I write a book. I blog. I am a mother of two children. And I have a grandchild. And I'm involved pretty heavily in the Relief Society, which is the oldest women's organization in the world. I'm pretty busy. And leadership has been a pretty messy business for me. Talk about messy. Let's imagine that you are out in a cow field. And you are surrounded by piles of dung. Cow pies, cow patties, whatever you want to call them. And you're standing there surrounded by this messy situation. Perhaps you spy a few piles of dung over, that there's something sticking out of one of these freshly laid piles. And you begin to observe that it's actually a $5 bill. And you begin to wonder, should I go see if that's actually a $5 bill? Should I risk walking through this messy field? to go see if that's actually what it is? Should I care if it is a $5 bill? Should I, should I, should I? Do you know what people are who ask, should I? They're shitheads. <laughs> shitheads are those people who just can't seem to make up their minds. They just lack commitment. Nobody likes a shithead, and I encourage you not to be a shithead. Let's revisit our cow pasture, and let's change this up a little bit. 
How about we imagine that you discover that that's actually not a $5 bill sticking out of that pile of dung, but that it's a $50 bill. Does this change the question that you're asking yourself? Or are you still filled with those should-head type of questions? Well, Rory Vaden says that about commitment, the more we have invested in something, the less likely we are to let it fail. So is $50 something that makes you more committed to act than $5? Does it make you start to think, how will I get that $50? How will I walk through this minefield of cow dung without getting messy? How will I spend that $50 when I get it? And how will I clean it up so that I will want to spend it? Do you see that when you change your mindset from should I to how will I, the opportunities open up to you. Because in reality, should I is a question that really gets you nowhere. And I believe that actually making a wrong decision is way better than making no decision. But the moment that you start asking yourself instead, how will I, then at least you've committed to taking some sort of action. This is how I looked yesterday. <laughs> or at least I felt I looked like this. When I got the email from Ken, our Toastmaster of the Day, asking me for my speech information, because I committed a few months ago that I would give a speech tonight, and I had totally forgotten about that commitment. And you saw what my desk looked like. And so when I realized that I had to think of something else, you probably thought that I would start going, hmm, should I just call Ken and tell him I do not have the bandwidth right now mentally to do this? Should I cancel my speech? Should I find somebody else to fill in for me? No, I wasn't thinking that at all. Because I am not a shouldhead. <laughs> but I did begin to think, how will I prepare a presentation in less than 24 hours, that will be a benefit to my club members. How will I do that with everything else that I have going on? You see, I was committed. And even though leadership is messy, I was not about to let somebody else clean up my mess. Now, when I was a young mother, and I had very cute children, I had a priority of making sure that my house was clean. And if you were to ask my children, now that are adults, they would probably tell you they remember that I was pretty strict with making sure their toys were picked up at the end of every day. And that they would remember that I was probably always cleaning or cooking or sewing something. Well, the heck with that now. <laughs> this is a picture of the inside of my head. This is really what it feels like to me. And I've had a mindset shift. It is no longer should I, should I, should I. I have a lot that I have to do, and I have to think every day, how will I accomplish the most important tasks that I have today? And a clean house is not one of those priorities for me. No longer. But what I have discovered is that because leadership is messy, there is a secret to making sure that we have a way to clean things up. What if you were to stop a load of laundry halfway through the cycle and left it there for a couple of days? What would you come back to? You would come back to some stinky, molded, molded mildewy clothes, wouldn't you? You'd have a greater mess than you started with. Well, leadership is no different than that. To be successful, we have to focus on the cycle of each project. I am slowly learning that multitasking does not always work. That it is far better for me to focus on a specific task 
until the wash and the dry and the folding and the putting away of that project has been done. And then I can move on to the next project. You see, leadership is a pretty messy business. But it's important that we clean it up. And I have some cards for you. Because I want you to commit to me that you're going to do some cleanup work. These cards say on them, don't be a shithead. <laughs> Ask, how will I instead? And on the back is a place for you to commit to something. And I will ask you to take one of these and to commit to change something about your messy leadership life to become more focused to help you clean up those messes. Now, I'm not saying that leadership is bad. I don't want you to think that I'm painting that picture. As a matter of fact, I think that leadership is messy and it's, the, it's a good thing. It's a good thing that it's messy because it has created a better me. I don't worry about a clean house anymore. My priorities are to help other people. And that is good about mess. I like messy lives that way. So commit to me that you're going to do something, that you'll no longer be a shithead, but that you will change your mindset because once you do that, you will see that you will no longer be a fleeting shadow of possibilities, but you will be able to leave a lasting legacy for others. Mr. Toastmaster.